Hi everyone, this is Robert with goldsilverpros.com and I'm here today with Bill Murphy who owns LeMetropoleCafe.com and also participates on Gata.org. How are you doing today, Bill? Thank you for joining. Great to be here, Robert. Thanks for having me. So we've had a lot of stuff happen in the world the last few months. I know since we had talked several months ago, uh, lots going on in the gold market, lots going on with the markets. Uh, I guess we'll jump right into gold. What are you seeing in the gold market today? Well, uh, it's, it's one of the best days from my standpoint. I've seen in 21 years I've been working on this stuff because uh, Mm -hmm. Basically, the gold market has blown up. This gold cartel, as I call them, the bullion banks, the Fed, the Treasury, Bank for International Settlements, other central banks, they blew up months ago, which is why the gold price was going up since the end of last May. Mm -hmm. And it's a long story, but basically, the essence of it is they have run out of enough physical gold to meet demand. They've played all these tricks, which we can get into, and highfalutin stuff, and it's all blown up on them. And now you've got gold in the process of exploding. It just took out $1,700 today, uh, which was the recent high. It's got a massive base. Uh, the shorts are in the biggest trouble. They can't find gold to deliver to people that want it. And you're going to see gold explode. I mean, the prices are going to just astound people on the upside. Yeah, I know that we've definitely had shortages. We saw that starting a couple of weeks ago in silver and then in gold on the retail exchanges. So if you're going to Atmex, or you go into goldsilver.com or one of these places, it's really hard to find it. And you're only finding maybe numismatics or there's pre-sell orders for gold that's not yet in on the retail shelves yet that they think may be coming from various refiners. Uh, are you also seeing this on uh, the large commercial side or within uh, the exchanges? Or is there a shortage of gold there as well? well? That's what's happening most right now. And it's really bizarre because right now today, for example, the spot gold is, is 10, 20, $30, probably on the Comex, higher than, say, a retail shop like a Gold Seek or a Kitco. Okay. And it's weird. The markets are going up and down. But basically, there's a panic in the paper market because of the gold cartel. These bad guys that have ripped everybody off mm -hmm. for all these years are blowing up. They do not have the physical gold to meet the demand. And the, the, there's buyers out there who know this who are going after them and say, we want our gold, and they can't deliver to them. So the gold and, and, and silver prices are taking off. Even just now, just a little while ago, silver rallied 25 cents on the COMEX, the spot price, and closed at 15.11. 15 was a near-term breakout point. It took it out easily. If it's silver gets above 20, it's on its way to 50, and then it's on its way to 100 because it's so cheap. I agree with that. The last time silver tried to break out, though, it seems like they beat it down to $12. And I know we had the coronavirus scare, but honestly, I don't think that's the full reason why silver went down so much. Do you think they're going to be able to do that one more time? Or Absolutely not. And that's what's, this is what I do you know, for the last number of years of my life. And I've been watching the COMEX open interest, which is the number of longs and shorts, and J.P. Morgan, which the Justice Department called a criminal enterprise, is mm -hmm. the one that has been taking the silver market down and rigging it for nine years. Yeah. And the open interest <clears throat> was 135,000 contracts on the COMEX when it went to 50 in 2011. It's been up to 245,000, 200,000 contracts for years. Just recently, just yesterday, it went down to 138,000 contracts, back down the bottom, wouldn't you know it, and all of a sudden silver's taking off. That's because JP Morgan has gotten out and they're, they're, they're not going to try to stop it this time because they, made, they did their thing, they made their money, they cooperated with the U.S. government. They have to let it go because silver is so cheap compared to gold, everyone wants it, and you, you can't buy it. Yeah. No, you can't find it anywhere, and with some of the silver miners going offline, it's going to be a lot harder as well. Not only silver miners, but base metal miners. Mexico, for example, has shut down mining at least temporarily due to the virus, so there's going to be some supply shocks, I think, in the near term. Absolutely um, correct. Right on the money. So what do you think is going to happen once the prices start to go up? Do you think it's going to be self-fulfilling where, because if you look at, at where the flight to safety usually it is, it's usually it's a dollar in the bonds. But right now we have so many negative yielding bonds uh, or close to zero yielding bonds or the, the pension funds and the hedge funds aren't going to be buying those bonds, I don't think, because they don't have the yield that they're looking for. 
Is that is some of that money going to come into gold? Do you think, and is that going to make the problem worse? I mean, zero interest rates. What could be more bullish? I mean, you've got the perfect storm set up again. As I stress this, the biggest issue is the shortage of gold that the gold cartel doesn't have the supply and demand. And you're going to have people that are going to want to run to gold for the obvious reason. Look at the debasement of what the Americans and other people are doing to their money. Two trillion here, another trillion there, two more trillion there. I mean, what backs it up? I mean, you never had this the most explosive situation for gold and silver in history. Mm -hmm. It's coming at a time when the bad guys are in deep trouble. Yeah. Um, so I was talking to Dave Prenzler about this this morning. We were talking about LB Main Comex. And I've heard, but I haven't been able to confirm that the 400 ounce bars or LB Main are somehow backstopping Comex, but they're doing it fractionally. So they're breaking up, you know, 400 ounce bar into 100 ounce uh, pieces. Uh, not physically, but but claimed on that 400 ounce bar, and somehow LBMA is backstopping Comex. Have you heard anything about this? Do you have any idea what's going on? Uh, it, it, it's it's almost it's almost, it's breathtaking. It's so pitiful and bad. They, well, they might as well offer celery or bananas. Yeah. <laughs> 400 ounce bar. You're going to cut it up in paper. They call it an ace, and you get one quarter of a gold. What are they going to do? Cut the gold up and smash right. it around? I mean. If you want gold, taking delivery is simple. On the Comex, I've done it. You have a 100 ounce contract, you, you, you stay long, the short gives you the issues of delivery and you get your gold. They have a default, it's called a force majeure. The whole, that's why I say that the gold market has blown up. The silver market hasn't yet, it will I think, but not yet. But the gold market has blown up. They come up with this goofy 400 ounce bar. It doesn't make any sense. If you want gold, you want gold. You don't want a quarter of a piece of paper in London. That you, I mean, it does. It's ludicrous. Yeah, yeah. I don't see that lasting very long. But it, at some point, it's almost collusion between the two markets, and it's hard because they each have their different regulators. But at some point, you have to say, okay, that's just falsifying. You're basically lying to the market, saying you're taking gold from one to the other. Well, if I may, you're absolutely right, but this is where it got us started. I mean, it started off with we realized the bullion banks, then we realized the Fed and Treasury were behind it. Then in 1999, the Bank of England offered to sell half their gold at a low price below $300 an ounce and announced it in advance. And people that thought Gata was nuts said, you guys are right. Nobody would announce selling all that gold in advance to get as low as a price as possible. That's and right. so the Bank of England, the LBMA, the COMEX, the BIS, they're all in on it together. The Fed, the Treasury, it's, it's, and, and they're caught. They finally have been found out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what about the, do you know anything about the Shanghai Exchange? I've heard that there is more physical trading on the Shanghai Exchange uh, in China than there is on these other exchanges. Do you think that people are going to default, go over to the Shanghai Exchange when, when the COMEX and LBMA are found out? Or what, what's going to happen to the gold market? I, well, I, I think it's, it's, it's everyone's going to scramble and, and cover their butts. I think I can tell you this, that the Chinese, I've talked with the Chinese sovereign wealth fund, they know what Gata knows. The Russians know what Gata knows. And they probably have taken the other side of the trade against this gold cartel, as I call them. So there's going to be a scramble, which is happening right now to get physical gold any way you can get it. That's why these spot premiums that you're talking about are so much higher. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 mind-boggling. You have to pay two hundred dollars over spot to get gold. Yeah, and it seems like the the I invested a little bit in numismatics just to have a little bit of diversification. Uh, and and for me that was a speculation. It wasn't a, a core holding in gold. But it's funny that the premiums on the on the numismatics have blown out because people can't find like a regular one ounce gold eagle maybe going to some of these uh, graded coins or you know pre nineteen thirty three gold or whatever because that's all really all that's left in the market. Um, and, and, and I didn't think that I would see that uh, as quickly as it happened. I thought, you know, I may be holding this stuff for 20 years to see, see any, any profit out of it. Um, you know, at this point, if, if, you know, if you can't, if, for people who don't have gold, what, where do they turn to? I know the ETFs, GLD and SLB are not safe places to put your money because you don't have a claim on the metal. If, if you're sitting out there right now and you're watching this video, you're like, oh, my God, I need to do something you know, to put uh, my money in a safe place, where do you go to at this point? Well, I'm prejudiced. My brother works for Scottsdale Bullion and Coin, and he sells gold and silver. But to be honest, they're even having trouble getting supply. 
Yes. And that's the problem is you want gold, guess what? <laughs> you can't get it. That's right. That's what's on us. That's why these futures markets today, especially, have just gone nuts to the upside. And technically, if you look at it, you go, oh my gosh, they're just, just beginning to, you know, gold above 1700. There's no stopping it till 1900 and, and, and silver about 1520. And then once it gets above 20, it's on its way, as I said, to 50 and 100. I think the surprise is going to be how fast the gold and silver prices move up in the weeks and months ahead. Do you have any idea what the re repercussions will be against the exchanges and the bullion banks involved? I know a way that a lot of laws are written is it, it allows them to sort of weasel out of these types of things. Do you think there's going to be more? I know we've seen the, the indictments from JP Morgan. Uh, I think it was the six traders who were caught you know, spoofing and, and manipulating that market. Do you think that the, the bank is going to be actually held accountable at the bank level? versus just going after a few of the traders? Do you think there's going to be consequences for any of this? There should be, but I doubt it. I mean, the CFTC, I've been down there a number of times, and, and Bart Shilton, God rest his soul, he died. He was the only guy who gave a crap, and excuse my language, but, mm -hmm. you know, they just don't do anything. They're all in on it together. It's, uh, you know, the J.P. Morgan's the Fed's bank. Mm -hmm. uh, all they do is they throw out a couple of sacrificial lambs and, you know, Again, but they, somebody out there had enough nerve to call the J.P. Morgan a criminal enterprise, and that's what it is. Yeah. They all are. I know for a fact that the LBMA, the BIS, the Fed, the Treasury, they're all in on this thing, and they've all been caught, and they're trying to cover their butts, and they're having trouble doing it <laughs> because, again, to repeat myself, the physical shortage. So I don't expect anything to come out. However, when – as this blows up now, the goddess story, what we've been telling people for 20 years, will be told by the price discovery, just like it was in Enron and Madoff, you know, outrageous scandals. And when it all blew up, that's when the public realized what was really going on. And that's going to be the same case in gold and silver. Given that China and Russia hold so much gold, and we think they actually have it versus uh, we don't necessarily think that the U.S. has their gold. Uh, how is that going to position them in, in, this, in this world where gold price blows up and they're, they're able to back their currency with significant amounts of gold? They're just sitting back in the catbird seat, quite frankly. Uh, it's just the way it is. And we've been, we've been trying to help and warn people about this for a long time. There hasn't been an audit of U.S. gold reserves since 1955, independent audit. Nobody knows what we have. Uh, as my colleague Chris Powell says, the United States would rather give out its nuclear secrets and tell anybody what they're doing in the gold market. And he's been so right. And it's, nobody knows. And it's, 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 it's horrifying what could happen. And uh, this is when the story will be told as the gold and silver markets blow up and, and then the public is going to demand answers. Yeah. I uh, well, want to do a quick note. I talked to somebody this morning who has <clears throat> uh, a business owner has a lot of silver if anybody wants a sizable silver position, contact me at robert at goldsilverpros.com. I've got a guy wanting to liquidate his. So if you need to find silver, I don't have access to any gold, but if you need to find a sizable silver position, I can help people out with that. Um, well, make sure you uh, 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 give me a copy, get me a copy of this so I can put it up and then maybe I have some people that, that can respond. Yeah, absolutely. We'll do that. I'll, I'll, we'll make this as widely available to people as possible. He's one of those business owners that unfortunately has gotten hit by the COVID crisis. He has three businesses and each one of them has been temporarily shut down. So he has to liquidate some of his precious metals. And it's really a shame that he has to do it. But on the other hand, at least he has his precious metals to do, you know, during this difficult time. Okay. Uh, you and I both live in the same area of town. What are you noticing with, with the crisis around you? How has this impacted uh, people around you? Do you know people that are suffering from, from this situation or? Not really. Uh, I mean, except that you can't do anything. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, everything's shut down. Uh, I used to go to the gym every day. That's a real bummer. I can't go there. And I go for a walk. That's a big deal. Uh, I get some food delivered to me and, and go out to the local store. What else can you do? Yeah. There's not much else. I mean, I, I used to play soccer and take martial arts and those have all, all those options have been shut down. We're, we're, my soccer mates and I are trying to figure out where to go to, to just have a friendly game. And uh, they've taken the nets down off the basketball courts and they've taken the soccer goalposts and move them to the corner of the parking lot. So. Yeah, I, I was going by, I was walking up by Katy Trail and they were three of these marshals and these, you know, these tripod machines, these bikes or whatever, they, they come along there looking at me stern like, geez, I, I, know, I didn't have a mask on. I wonder if they were going to arrest me or something. 
Well, it's good to hear from you, Bill. I uh, definitely want to keep in, in contact with you. I know this would be a very exciting time if we actually start to see true price discovery in the precious metals. Uh, it'll, it'll mean a lot of uh, good things for precious metal investor, and it may mean some good things for the market. So we finally have some transparent price discovery uh, coming back to the precious metals after, after so much time. Just imparting, do you have any advice for people who may be holding their money in 401ks or pensions? Uh, anything that that, that they uh, you know could do in, in this crisis. Well, if, you know, I'm prejudiced, of course, and I think you know this is going to be the biggest move in history in gold and silver. So yeah. any exposure people can get to gold and silver is great. The shares have you know because of the shutdowns and different issues and so on have been suppressed. But when people realize what's happening and they get going again, the, the, the gold and silver shares are just going to go nuts to the upside. You won't yeah. be able to buy them, and that's been delayed, but that's coming and. All I know is, you know, what, you know, guys and girls in our camp and men and women it, with the gold and silver, it's been so suppressed for so long, people have no idea. And to at least understand that that's unraveling right now will give people more confidence to get as, as much involved as they can because the moves are just going to stagger people to the upside. Yeah, I agree. Okay, Bill, thank you so much for sharing your time. Appreciate it. Thank you, Robert. Take care.